Well, greetings once again. It's Prophet Tom here from Brisbane, Australia. What a joy and a privilege it is to be with you again today. We're continuing to look at the names of God. And last week we began to look at I am the light to the world. And we'll continue with that topic today. In uh, 1 John and chapter 1 and verse 5, we read that it says, God is light. I want to read it to you from the Passion Bible. And so it says, this is the life-giving message. We heard him share. Now, this is the disciple of Jesus who risked it on the chest of Jesus, the one who Jesus said, I love. This is the one who was at the cross, the only disciple who stood at the cross when Jesus hung on the cross. And he says here, this is the life giving message. This is the transformation to your life. This is the thing that is going to take you out of darkness and bring you into glorious light. Do you know this week throughout the world, oh, tens of thousands of unborn babies have been aborted. Now, without going into any other statistics, this tells us that we live in one of the darkest ages of society's history. Yeah, I know when we look back and we can look at the 1200s or the you know other periods uh, throughout the centuries and even be, be beyond before Christ and we go into BC, there were some horrific times. But I dare question whether thousands and tens of thousands and millions of unborn babies have been killed every week, every month, every year, without ceasing, in fact, is increasing. And so we live in a dark age. But John says here, and I love it so much, this is the life-giving message. We heard Jesus Christ, the light, the I am the light to the world. We live in a dark age world. But Jesus Christ, John is telling us that Jesus Christ uh, is the light to this world. Uh, this is the life-giving message. We heard him share and it's still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you. Listen, God is pure. Say this, pure. God is pure, without spot, without even a drop, without even a fine little particle of darkness. God is pure light. You will never you can search as much as you like. You can research as much as you like. You can analyze as much as you like, uh, but you will never find even a trace, let alone being darkness. You will never even find a trace of darkness in him. Verse 6, six says this, if we claim that we share. So, so now John is moving the emphasis from Christ onto you and I. And so he says in verse six, if we claim that we share life with him, you know, are we believers? Have we been born again? Do we go around confessing that Christ lives within us? That's what, they, that's what he's saying. He says, if we claim that we share life with him, but keep walking in the realms of darkness. We fool ourselves and not living the truth. You know, sadly today, when I look at uh, the church of Jesus Christ in many different quarters, uh, I see darkness. I don't see light. Uh, I see gossiping. I don't see uh, purity. I see backbiting. Uh, I see alcohol being consumed. Uh, 
I see uh, gluttony. You know, I, I, I see things that are, are darkness, not life, uh, not purity. We've been taken out of darkness and placed into life. That means our life must change. And so John is saying, not me. Now, now get this. This is not Tom James speaking. This is the word of God. This is the apostle who rested his head on the shoulder of Jesus Christ, who walked with Jesus for three, over three years, who saw the dead being raised, who saw blind eyes open, who saw how he dealt with the religious people of his day. And he's saying to you and I today, if we claim that we share life with him, but keep walking in the realms of darkness. You know, we can go to Galatians chapter 5, 16 to 20. There you'll begin to see what that darkness is. So if we choose to continue walking in darkness, we are fooling ourselves and not living the truth. But if we keep living in the pure light, you know, as I said to you last week, you look at this room that I'm in, my office, and I have a fan above my head, and you can see the shadow. You can't see the fan, but you can see the shadow. That tells us that we are not living in this room. This room is not pure light. But if you look over here to this dark blind that I have here, and, and although it's cutting out light to a large extent so that you can see me on the screen, on the end, you will see light glaring in. And the light that is glaring in is greater than the light that is in this room. There are different degrees of light that God and Paul is telling us here that God is pure light. And we need to walk in that pure light. If you claim that we share life with him, but keep walking in the realms of darkness, we fool ourselves and not living the truth. But if we keep living in the pure light that surrounds us, if we keep walking in the pure light that surrounds us, listen, we share unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, listen, continually cleanses us from all darkness continually cleanses us from all sin. Let's go over to Philippians. And in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15, we read these words. So let all who are fully mature. Sorry, I'm in the wrong one. One back over on chapter 3. Chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 15. Listen. For, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture. You see what Paul is telling us here, that we can live in this dark age. We can live in this environment that is full of darkness, that is full of the realm of Satan. We can live in this realm, and we can live in this realm innocent, faultless, and pure children of God. For it says, for you will appear amongst them as shining light in the universe. You see, that's why we've got to live in this dark world, because we become the light to this world. We become the light to this world. Let me read on for a moment more. For you will appear amongst them as shiny lights in this universe, offering them the words of eternal life, offering them the words of eternal life. You know, the word of God tells us in Psalms, we can quote it just about off by heart, but Psalms 119 and verse 105, it says, your word 
What is the word? John tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Here we see Christ. Christ, God Almighty, is a lamp, is a light, is a glow to my feet. What does this tell us? It tells us that he's taking us away from the darkness. He's walking us through the darkness. We may live in a society that is controlled and bound by darkness, but we, where we are, there is a light, there is a lamp, and we cannot be ensnared by the, the darkness of this world because around us, as we just read, around us, is a glow around us is the light of almighty god and so verse five says your word god is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path god is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path how does this work how do we become the lights for god how do we become a radiant light in this dark and perverse and sinful world that we're living in? How do we become the shining beacon to lead people out of darkness and into light? You know, I used to be an associate pastor of a large church in Townsville, in Queensland here, about a 15 hour drive from where I live. And, and uh, we had about a thousand people back in those days. That was the early eighties. And uh, what we used to do is we bought, the, the church bought this 100 acres of land just on the edge of Townsville. And, uh, and, and we broke it up into 33 uh, acre blocks. And so the first 33 acres uh, was going to be for the, the Bible college that we were running there. The second 33 acres was going to be for the church complex that would have been built one day. And then the third 33 acres was going to be for a, 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 a seniors um, living accommodation and hospital and so forth. And so at this stage, we were uh, in, the, in the first 33 acres and we had a church there that would seat around 1200 people. Uh, but we had our services at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. We had a morning service as well, but we had our evening service at 4 p.m. The reason we had our evening service at 4 p.m. is because when the lights would come on, every bug that was in that 100 acres would come towards the light. And so the night you were fighting the bugs off instead of hearing the word. And you know, that's what we are to this world. We are the light and the bugs are to be drawn to us. We are the light and the bugs, when the light is turned off, the bugs are drawn to the light. Mm -hmm. Now in, in the Gospel of John in chapter 17, this is the final prayer of Jesus Christ. It is a powerful prayer. We don't have time, this would take us hours to go through this, but I wanna share on just two verses here. And it says in verse 20, I do not pray for the, these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. Now what Christ is unfolding here, he's talking about the oneness between the Father and himself. And he's saying that Father, you and I are one. But now I've come to the end of my life. I'm about to leave this earth and return to the sovereignty of heaven. I'm about to sit on the throne next to you, almighty God. And so, Father, as you and I are one, bring my children into that mold. Father, make one with you and me, with you and me and the church. And so verse 21 says, that they all may be one as you, 
Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory, the light, the glory, the light, oh, the light, the glory, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. And so Jesus is saying that we are now the light. We are now full of the glory of God. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Wow. One with God Almighty. One with God Almighty. And let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and, uh, and, and verse 20. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, we read these words. I have been crucified. This is talking about you and I. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in Christ Jesus, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Let me go back. I have been crucified. You see, our flesh is darkness. Our flesh can't go to heaven. Our flesh was made of dirt, and to dirt it will return. It's the spirit that God makes alive. It's the spirit that the light burns out of. And so Paul, uh, Paul is telling us, I have been crucified with Christ, so it's no longer I who live but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Let me say it again. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 20 says this. We are lights of the anointed one. Let me cover down. There. Let me give you the wording that's in the Bible because it means the same thing. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carries the message of Christ to the world as though God was tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips and our life. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ behalf. Turn back to God and be reconciled to him. So here we see that God, Christ is saying, Paul is telling us here that we are ambassadors, that we are God's light here on this earth, that we are the of the royal family, that we are one with God, that we are the anointed ones. Let's see what uh, 1 Peter, and we'll begin to wind up now. Let's see what 1 Peter in chapter 2 and verse uh, 9 has to say. I think we'll uh, read it from the King James Version. 1 Peter One Peter chapter two and verse nine. Listen, I like this. It's a powerful, powerful text. It says this, but you, that is you, that is you, that is you, but you, say it, I, but you are a chosen generation. 
You know, I heard a pastor say, I always fail. If only I could do this. If only I could do that. I felt like saying to him, read Psalms 139 verses 14 through to 16, for it says, you are uniquely made. And this is what Peter's bringing out. Peter's saying, listen, I want to tell you how uniquely made you actually are. You are a chosen generation. You're special. We live in the darkest time in history, I believe. And yet we're a chosen people in this time. Wow. <laughs> we're a chosen people in this dark generation church. Don't go out there being fearful and afraid of this world. Go out with the revelation and knowledge that we are a chosen people. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you, what? Out of darkness and into marvelous light. That's why it's so important. You see, when we're in the light, we know who we are. When we're in the light, we are uniquely made. When we're in the light, uh, we are a chosen generation. Uh, when we are in the light, uh, we are a royal priesthood. Uh, when we are in the light, uh, we are a holy nation. Uh, when we are in the light, uh, we are a special people. When we are in the light, uh, we are covered in the glory of Almighty God. Uh, when we are in the light, uh, the bugs are... Uh, of this world that surrounds us, uh, the people around us, uh, the, the darkness, uh, those living in the, under the bondages of Satan will be drawn to you and will cling to you. Uh, and through the light uh, that comes out of you and through you, uh, they will be, will be transformed. Uh, their lives will be different. Uh, they will become anew. Uh, they will be powerful. They will be uh, transformed. Uh, in the moment of time, so it says, because, you know, Psalms and uh, a powerful, powerful Psalm of David. And he says in Psalms 27, the Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You see, if we're walking in the light, if we're walking in the light, who shall I fear? Amen. Father, it's been a privilege being with you today, being a privilege sharing with these beautiful people. We thank them for coming on and joining with us. Uh, we thank you, almighty God, that, that through this word, that they will get revelation of the light, uh, that through this word, uh, they will see that they are a royal priesthood, uh, that through this light, uh, they will see that they are in this dark world uh, to attract the bugs, to attract the, the unrighteous, to attract the sinners uh, so that they can experience uh, the light that we live in. Father, we looked at this last week in Isaiah. Lord, that the, the darkness of this world will see the light. We are that light, almighty God. Lord, help us to shine everywhere we go for your glory. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a joy once again. This is Prophet Tom, and it's been a joy to be with you, to share this powerful word. I could speak for hours, but, uh, you know, these are just short devotional words to challenge, to encourage, and to strengthen you. If you get an opportunity, look at my Facebook or my YouTube. Uh, I've been speaking on the power of the blood, a five-minute devotion, although i got to admit, I don't stick to five minutes. And then on Thursdays, we share on living a supernatural life, being spirit beings. So come again and tune in with us on Thursdays if you're free, and uh, we will have a powerful time together. But from this moment on, see yourself full of light and that you are the light to this dark world. God bless you. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. This is Prophet Tom saying greetings from Australia. Oh, you're on the tube.